All right, this is going to be a short video on uh, dealing with some of the design rules and talking about the significance of them, uh, how to set them up properly, um, and how they're actually used to make sure that your board can be manufactured, essentially. So that's really what it's all about. So this board, what we're looking at here, so I'm gonna, this is a 2D mode, I wanna go to 3D mode, and just press the but, uh, number three button and uh, you can use the press and hold the shift and then press and hold down the right mouse button you can uh, maneuver this around you can kind of look at it it's a interesting 3d mode uh, but this is basically a breakout board so i have uh, so what we have here is a small uh, 16 pin qfn so qfn refers to uh, is a acronym for quad flat pack no pin so the has no pin has no external piece of metal that comes out from the package itself uh, just has these metal tabs on the side as well as on the bottom. So this is the part that attaches to the so to the solder pad, uh, and the solder uh, paste is extruded uh, onto these pads, and then the uh, component gets placed down on top. And it goes through a uh, infrared oven or hot air oven, and then the solder is melted, and the components are attached. But the idea of this board, so I'm going to type zero to re-square it press 2 to go back to 2D mode or 2D view. So the idea of this board is to um, convert essentially a quad flat pack or a surface mount component into something that can be placed on a breadboard. So this is um, based on the size of a small dip package that's uh, 16 pins. So it goes 1 through 8 and then 9 through 16. And you can see here we've already got a bunch of errors. Uh, let's actually zoom in real close. So you can see all these red X's. Well, I guess the um, yeah, you can see all these red X's has uh, that's actually the error. So then it also will tell you uh, some errors. So if we click on, let's just click on one pad. So I'm going to right click on the pad, then I will go down to violations. So it'll actually tell me what the violations are. So it has a clearance constraint. Uh, it's actually 7.874 mils. So that's pretty precise but our rule is set to 10 mils so really the issue is and then also the clearance constraint between pad and top layer <clears throat> i think that's something similar yeah so the i'm just going to hit escape twice uh, so the issue is is this a dimension that the board manufacturer can uh, actually build so to that we go to so i'm using jlc pcb I uh, don't mean to endorse them, but they're really cheap and they're really fast and the boards are decent quality for the price. So what we want to do is we want to look at uh, the clearances. I think I just missed them. Oh, here we go. Here are the minimum clearances. So this is the part where it will tell you what, uh, how small they can make something and how big they can make something. Uh, so if we actually looked at our pad, so we have the pad to pad clearances. So this is going to be a surface map uh, distance between the pads. It can be 0 0.127 millimeters. So we're, you, know, you most likely actually are familiar with inches, so you don't know, uh, you know, don't have an intuitive understanding of millimeters. Uh, so we're talking five thousandths of an inch. So if you go back to Circuit Maker, you can see that it's, uh, you know, there's also, um, it's greater. It's saying that, well, it's, it's saying that it's smaller than the, the 10 mils design. So what we want to do, so we're going to deal with the, the pads first. We're going to go to the design rule. We want to go to clearance, and uh, actually we're going to go to this clearance. This is a, apparently a rule I made up earlier. Um, so this is the, so let's see if I, let's just, so you can see it so it's not too overwhelming. Uh, so we're looking at the electrical. So we're going to go to the clearance, and you can set up, uh, you can set up multiple rules, but we're just going to do one rule for everything. So we've got it set to 10, and we know from the manufacturer that we can go down to 5 mils. Now, you don't, just because you can go that low doesn't mean you should, uh, but you can. So we're going to just go through and set everything to, so I'm left-clicking, then I'm dragging, and we're just going to do the through-hole pads as well, just not for any real reason. But we're just going to go down to 7, then hit Enter. And it changes them all simultaneously. So click apply, click OK, and it looks like some of it, some of the errors went away. So let's actually go ahead and right click on that, look at the violations, and so between pad and top layer, and pad on top layer.
Did somebody just take care of that? Anyway. Alright, so let's go back to the design rules. And so we got this all set up as seven. Surface mount, through hole, those are all seven. This should, this should be within the constraints. Alright, well, that's just going to be a pain, isn't it? Alright, well. Ah. You know what? Let's actually delete this, delete the rule. And click apply. Yep. And okay. Ha ha. <laughs> okay. So the issue there was actually with the design rules, you can actually have multiple rules and you can set the priorities. So there I actually had two rules and the one was on top and then that gives it priority. So uh, the clearance, the, the ones that we set up so that it would actually uh, take care of that error uh, was had a lower priority. So now that we set the priority properly, uh, got rid of the one extraneous rule, then we're, we're good to go. So now we've still got a couple of errors that have to do with the um, size of these vias. So this might be something that's just inherent to the part, um, but all, it always has to do with uh, what can be manufactured. So we're going to actually do the right thing and go through and get rid of, uh, or uh, correct I should say, uh, this error. So we're going to do vias, or more generically, we're just going to do some holes. So we go back up to JLC PCB, and let's see, minimum clearance, annular ring, that's generic stuff where it's staring right at me, isn't it? Drill hole size, yeah, ha. <laughs> Alright, not quite staring at me, but there we go. So their minimum drill hole size is going to be 0.2 mils, or excuse me, 0.2 millimeters. So 0.2 is 7.8, blah, blah, blah. So if we do 8, we should be fine. So, and then we also wanted to keep in mind what the minimum annular ring size is, which is the yellow part here. And then that drill hole, and we go minimum annular ring is going to be, so we're doing a one ounce copper pour should be 0.13 millimeters. That seems kind of small. 0.13. So it's an additional 5.11. I don't know. So we're just going to do, let's see what was the hole. No trace width, no clearance, blah, blah, blah. Set mask. Good lord. Yeah. So go up to JLC PCB. We see that the minimum drill hole size is 0.2 millimeters, which is uh, so. If we use eight mils as a minimum hole, we should be fine. And if we go to the minimum diameter of the whole thing is 0.45. So 0.45. We'll call that 18 mil. All right, so we're gonna have our hole be about eight mils and our, the via, uh, the outer diameter of the annular ring be 18. And that should be something that's manufacturable. So we're gonna do minimum, so this is gonna be the whole size, minimum of, where did I say eight? Preferred, eh, let's do eight. Maximum, I will just keep it 28, doesn't really matter. Minimum of the outer, where did I say 18? Maximum, who cares, preferred. Let's just do 18 and click apply and click OK. And there we go. That takes care of all the errors. Uh, well, they're not really errors. They're design rule violations. So we've set it up based off of the manufacturer ability or the manufacturer's capability. And we set our design rules according to that. So now we are not violating any design rules, but we might just yet soon. <laughs>